Global Game Jam 2017 is now on at Niagara College, with participants scrambling to put out a complete video game in 48 hours. One of the main flaws of most game developers is like getting something done. Everybody has ideas. Every single person who's ever played a video game has an idea for a game. But even if you have the skills to make a game, many people spend two, four, six years even working at like this idea, just keep on iterating and nothing really gets done out of it. You're just kind of spinning your wheels. Doing it in 48 hours with a goal, with a, with a deadline date. Waves is a theme, it's interesting. At first, um, you think of it as like ocean waves. So it's like, okay, I have to make a game about water. That kind of sucks. But then you think about it, there's a lot of things that are waves. Like you can have waves of enemies, you can have sound waves, you can have you can have people physically waving. There's, there's so many ways you can take it. Like the theme is not, there's never context in it. It's always just you get the one word, they show you no pictures about what it could be, and they just tell you to go with it. This is the second annual game jam that Niagara College is hosting, giving developers and students alike a chance to showcase their design and development skills. I've had four hours of sleep over the weekend. Uh, I don't know how long I've been up, but the game's done, and nobody's died yet, so it's a mixture of panic, sleep deprivation, and I know exactly what I'm doing, followed by whoops. <laughs> like, there is a team using the eye tracking software this year. Um, I haven't actually gotten to look at it, but they got it working like super quick, so I'm really excited to see that. Um, the big teams this year are actually working out, like last year, usually bigger teams, more more stuff going on. This year's going really well, um, and all the teams are helping each other. That's something I've realized, like everyone's helping, like code, art, everything. Like, I actually got 35 registered entrants this year, but nine completed games. Compared to like 19 entrants at five games last year, this is crazy. Like, um, basically our plan this year, or our plan from this is to keep on doing this every single year, and just keep game gen going in Niagara, like not even just here, anywhere, basically. So our game is called Eye of the Storm, and in short, it's a game inside of a hurricane. Well, more specifically, the eye of the hurricane. While you're jumping from object to object trying not to fall in the water, we have uh, objects uh, flying out of the hurricane towards you, try trying to knock you off and provide uh, platforms as well. Yeah, so basically, um, there are a bunch of different objects flying out of the hurricane that float on the water and you jump from object to object trying not to get knocked off or fall into the water. Um, originally I think we were going to have actual waves of water coming at you instead of objects, um, but we kind of just played around with the idea of a hurricane, having things fly at you from different directions and found that that would be a pretty fun idea. It, it also, having random objects flying at you kind of allowed for a ton of nonsensical creative freedom like First, first off, uh, a, a raft would come flying out, for example, uh, a piece of a boat or something, and suddenly this hurricane is throwing sharks at you and killer whales. It's very tiring, <laughs> but uh, overall, it's a really good experience uh, to be able to get a group of friends together, uh, work on a project. Learn, learn new things yeah. that you haven't done before, like particle systems or low poly modeling, yeah. or all that kind of friends. Get out stuff. of your comfort zone, learn something new. Sure. Uh, so basically what we did is we did a game called uh, Tiki Tide, and what it is is basically using some new technology from Toby, uh, an eye tracker. So basically it tracks the movement of your eyes, and basically we created a game based off of that, where you uh, take some items from the center of the game that are just basically generated uh, at random, and then uh, use your eyes to move it to the edge of the screen. So it uh, provided us with quite a bit of a challenge, but uh, in 48 hours, I guess we... Uh, we managed it. One of the biggest ones at first was probably taking the real-time space that the, like the eye tracker, like where you look at the screen is coordinates on the screen, taking the coordinates and putting it onto like 
the reticle to make it look like so you know where you're looking rather than randomly so rather just kind of guess working where you're looking to make sure it's actually working it was one of the biggest ones at first after that was completed i think after that it wasn't even the eye tracking that was the difficulty part it was the generation of the gems and then the bombs and then making it so that they don't overlap on each other so because like if you get a gem touching a bomb automatically boom there goes one life and you're automatically down one life and you haven't done anything uh this is my second time doing a game jam so it's like all similar to me it's like it wasn't as bad as last time last time i didn't sleep at all this time we chose such a simple idea that we were able to take turns on who does what and like we were able to go home and sleep and get some sleep and stuff because we actually had like nine people on our team. <laughs> but, and to think how much, for how, like, in a way, we got a lot of progress done on it, but in the same time, we got very little progress done on it, because there's still much more we could have did. So with all the nine people we had, like, it was still quite difficult just getting the deadline and, you know, getting a working prototype. Yeah, like, so what does the whole do Yeah. How Like, it's statement. It's statement. Yeah, it's uh, EM employees. Uh, they're recycle bots that are trying to collect computers for their company, uh, but they have to evade each other and uh, the EMP shots as well, so they can try to get more than their robot partners. Just got the uh, the theme last night of waves. Uh, we we're thinking about ocean stuff, but we wanted to do something unique. Um, that wasn't involving water. So we decided on either an EMP wave or a shock wave. And we actually came up with the idea pretty quickly and we all uh, have worked together in a team before. There's uh, six of us, including the three of us that are here. So we got to work uh, pretty much straight away and were able to get a lot done in the first day. Lots of different objects that can uh, populate the area and stuff like that, getting to work on characters. So. Yeah, there was like a little bit of conflict about like, because we had six people, so you had to like, like we, we knew that there would be a lot of programming for the two programmers of us, but for like the four artists, like, you got to make sure everyone's like working all the time, and if you run out of things, you don't want them just like spam us or something, so we wanted to make sure that the theme was like diverse enough, but also stylistic enough that they kept having like motivation, and, you know, like kind of saw it in a hole, it's like more props and stuff, but they didn't have to. So like we, there was a little bit of tension there, but like, we got a good theme out anyway. I think the first night on Friday uh, was when we did our most work. We were really, really excited about it. Um, and then we all kind of made the mistake of not going to sleep that night so that we could stay up and work some more. And by the time the next morning we rolled around, we were all sleeping in chairs and grouchy about stuff with each other. Uh, but luckily, because we've worked together before, we are pretty good at, at uh, working as a team. There wasn't really any arguments to get in our way, so it was basically just uh, the challenges of coming up with what we wanted to do for the game and how we wanted the characters to look and act. Kind of useless You know, little quibbles uh, over how the game mechanics will work and things like that. But we're pretty lucky we had a pretty good group. Near the ending, it really worked out well because, like, one person would be, like, finishing up a model and then be like, all right, texture it, and then they would send it over to the next person. It would just be kind of that cycle of, like, sharing all between each other. It turned out really well. With the event now wrapping up, the participants now will head home for some much-needed rest. A link to the Game Jam website can be found in the description so you can check out the games generated by the event. I'm Alex York with Niagara News, signing off.